I'm Tom Vassell. I'm Z Garcia. Hello! I'm Sam Healy. I'm sorry, I'm Doctor. Apparently I'm the only normal one here today. <laughs> okay, so today we're talking about top 10 games that make us feel smart. Now, really this is different than the opposite of the list, which is top 10 games that make you feel stupid. Derm. Really? Well, I know, but people, I, I, I know some people are like, well, would you say this game? Someone mentioned, like, for example, Anachrony is going to be on list. Anachrony, when I play it, I'm like, this is good. It's fun, but I'm not feeling too smart playing this game. Right. So maybe it's not games that are smart. It's games that make you feel smart. He, whether again, uh, we talked about this, whether it's an illusion that the game is really able to hide from you. Like in some games, you can do clever things, but you can tell the game is being like, here, do this, it's clever. And you just do it and you're like, cool, game, you're clever. That's, that is sometimes the reason I've said that yeah, on my list. Yeah, but for me, a lot of it is that the game is able to make me feel clever. Like, I came up with an answer, even yeah. though the designers clearly know that's in there. But yet the game finds a way to be like, you're so smart. Look at that combination <laughs> you did. And you well, buy like it. That. Like an idiot, you buy into that. <laughs> Top ten games that upset me. But also, I feel smart. Smart. So how did you guys put your list together? You guys mentioned yours. What about you? Numbers? Well, I mean, I I pretty much followed that same idea, but uh, there's a couple of them that are, they've made me feel smart in a specific situation. Smart. Um, so that's why I included it on the list, and sometimes it was because I almost beat somebody, because I did beat somebody okay. on another one. Smart. Um, and some of them, I don't, it's not because I won or lost, it's because uh, I, sometimes I do very badly. And at the end of the game, I'm like, oh, yeah, I'm not smart. <laughs> Games that delude you and think you're smart <laughs> and then smack you down and be like, so, you were not. Those yeah, are, yeah. It's a it, different it, thing. Mainly, it's, it's uh, of course, ranked from uh, the, the least smirt to the most smirt, but... Um, yeah. Uh, yeah. <laughs> Pretty much. Not really, not, definitely not in order of how much I like the game. This is like a hard one to like do Yeah, it's that hard way. to quantify the, the game this that makes stuff, me the right? smartest is number one. Yeah, don't worry about it. Don't worry about the, the, the ranking too much on this one, y'all. I uh, would say. Well, let's, speaking of which, let's get to number 10. Smart. Number 10. My number 10 is uh, one of the games where I beat somebody at it. And I've shared this story before uh, where there was a guy sitting to my right. And uh, he, uh, during the course of the game, he kept saying how he was going to win because he always wins. And uh, whenever he plays this combination of, of races and smash-up, uh, then... So I this always, is like a specific game of yeah, Smash Yeah, this is a very specific game, and I that have... poor teenager. It is... It <laughs> He's is an the adult one, now. <laughs> no, he is. Um, but... So the story's legit. So he is... He is just... I mean really being kind of pompous about not the fact that he's going to win and there's who should just you know what did he know we were going to talk about you know, this, this, for the next this all six kind years. of stuff and and uh you know he actually said on uh, right before i won he's like i'm going to win on my next turn and then i was like boom 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 uh i believe i just won and he was just dumbfounded the blood drained from his face <laughs> And I felt very smart. Did you gloat a little bit? I didn't. I just... Well, he oh has my. been gloating on our podcast no. for like the past no, several I'm years. Not. Oh, I'm man, I'm sorry. Not. If ever I am like justified to rub someone's face in it, it would be someone who spends the whole t game yeah. just talking about how they they can't wait to beat me, how they're going to beat me. Oh, my goodness. I'm sorry. There would be... I wouldn't hold back on that one. <laughs> I didn't. I just was like, okay, cool, good game. Oh, <laughs> I did like bad game. Good game, sir. I, no, I didn't do that. I just, I was just like, um, I think I just won. And I looked at him, and blood drained. It was, it was really. Oh, his blood would have drained with me too. <laughs> 
I that so, that was a softball. I don't tell yeah, you. Yeah, it, it was. It was. was, it was, was, it was. So that's my number ten smash up. All right, my number ten. I was playing this guy once on a plane, and he was all like, "Oh, I don't know how to play this game well," and uh, <laughs> I said, "Oh, don't worry, I'm gonna win," and then I did win. But then he won't, he beat me later on. Anyway, the game's Hiroshima Hex, and the guy was Sam. <laughs> I was trying to figure out which of us it was, because no, I don't... It was me, yeah. <laughs> uh, Once you said Hiroshima Hex, I was like, whoo, wasn't me. No, Hiroshima Hex has a lot of those moments that allow for clever play with... Again, because you are kind of building up this puzzle that eventually when someone plays a specific tile, the whole puzzle sort of attacks itself and falls apart and destroys itself, and then you start building the puzzle again. Yeah. Sometimes that building phase... It's very short. Sometimes you put a couple of new things out and push the button and you see what happens. But sometimes it's really long to the point that there's a rule in the game that if the puzzle is so big that it encompasses every space on the board, the button self-activates. And so there is a fight. You don't have to trigger one. And that, putting that together, like this guy's going to shoot here first because he's faster. So this is going to be gone. Which means when this guy shoots, that's no longer there, so it shoots through that spot to this spot. If you can figure that out, you're going to be at an advantage, and that's really fun. Now, when you miscount that, you don't feel so smart. Or if the tiles don't come up. Oh, well, then, then, yeah, you just might not get dealt what you need. But when yeah. things work out and you are able to put those little puzzles together, and they go the way you want it, yeah, it feels good. Clearly, it's the game, and they're designed to allow you to do this, but it still feels good to be the one to pull it off. So, Hiroshima Hacks, my number 10. Hiroshima Hacks is one of those games that no matter what tiles I draw and what faction I'm playing, I feel like the other guy has better tile draw and a better faction yeah. every single time. You know why, right? I almost put this on my list. Because you're not smart. <laughs> you're not smart. I almost put this on my list because I've beat you a few times. You did. Yeah, you I definitely did. did. <laughs> All right, my number 10 is a game that I often do not play but instead run, but I have played this game, and that is Wits and Wagers. Mm -hmm. And what you feel smart about in this game is when you make an educated guess, and then you're like, you know what? We're all in on this guess. This guess is right. I know it's right. You put everything on the line. And when it is right, that feeling of satisfaction of, I do know this useless piece of trivia, which you don't know, but you were close. You were close, right. No, so and that's, that's the nice thing about wits and close. wagers, is just being close. But being close in this game, the closest, means you're the smartest. So I might not know how many movie theaters in America, but if I was pretty close, I'd be like, it's right. My... Uh, useless guessing worked <laughs> right and so it just makes you feel that smart from that whole or even if it's someone on your team if you're playing with teams that whole i'm with bob that's right we're smart that's, together that's i didn't right. know any of it but bob did all the work so i like wits and wagers that's a good one for my that, number yeah. 10. number nine hmm Shenanigans going on. All right, my number nine, speaking of shenanigans, uh, my number nine is number nine. Really? Yeah. Oh, you adorable. I did. No, no, let me take that back. Adorable. Adorable. Are we spelling everything wrong now? <clears throat> yeah, because um, I'm smart. <laughs> and this this is really, again, like we were saying earlier, you, you can't really put these in any real cohesive order, I guess. Well, you can try to be cute. So I chose to put it on number nine. So there. That's the only reason. I can't wait um, for the rest. I know what number five is going to be. <laughs> I enjoy... No, it didn't go seven that Seven and seven, eight, nine? Um, I enjoy... Seven wonders. I enjoy... I guess you could call it tetris -y kind of games, but this is almost like two two-dimensional Tetris. Right. Uh, stacking the numbers on top of each other and you score as many points for the level that it's on times I think the number or something to that effect. I can't remember the it's scoring something mechanism. Something like that, yeah, yeah, But yeah. Um, I just really enjoy uh, putting numbers, uh, you, you know, the different shapes on top of them, uh, each other. And I usually do pretty good at games like this, and this is one of the games that I've, I've done well at in the past. I haven't always won, but I just I have felt like I've done a good job throughout the entire game. Right. And uh, that's why it made my list. Um, it's not 
not really a, a tremendously fun game that I'm going to want to bring out all of the time, but when it hits the table, I have a good time playing it. Uh, I don't know if that makes any sense, but and, and when I play it, I not only have fun, but I feel good about myself for having done so. Aww. So, yeah, so uh, this is just another one that just makes me feel uh, like, you know, my brain is doing something other than just occupying the space in my head. Yeah. Yeah. You're so good, number nine. <laughs> okay, my number nine is. Seven of nine. Two, or Deus. Deus. Oh, I don't know why I was thinking of Dose. That's the, <laughs> the sequel to Uno. Ooh, that's a, that's coming up. My number two will be Dills, and my number one, Uno. No, my number nine is Deus. In Deus, what it is uh, that does it for me is the card stacking thing that happens as you build a card in that game. You are going to put that card in a, in a column in front of you, and any further cards in the same column sort of stack in the same line. And you can trigger combos if you play these out in a, in a clever order. In which, you know, because every time you play a new card, not only does the power on that trigger, but all the previous ones you've built, they trigger. And if you manage it, where you can get, you know, one card gives you a four stone, and then the next one lets you sell stone at a hiked up price, and the next one lets you take that gold and turn it into something great, then you come out looking like you know exactly what you're doing. Hmm. Whether that's simply because there are enough combos that this happens, or because you actually are doing something well, or because you just drew the right cards, that's debatable. But it still feels good when you are able to pull these moments off. And I like to, I like to do it, and I like to see it. Because it's cool when somebody else is able to go, oh yeah, look, I take this, I turn it in for that, and then I spread myself on here. Look at that. That's a, that's a turn right there. I'm like, yeah, that was good. I, I like that. There's a lot of games these days that do this sort of combo building where I feel they bog down. It happens too much. Uh, I'm thinking here like, you know, uh, gizmos and wingspan to a certain degree a little bit. But I still say Deus does all this stuff a little bit faster. And I just, I just like it more. So my number nine. It's also prettier. Uh, I think so. My you number don't nine, even think that. Come on. Deus is definitely more attractive than wingspan. Birds. Pretty birds, gorgeously illustrated birds. <laughs> Ain't nobody got time for that. Ain't nobody got time for that. Ain't nobody got that. Now I'm my number nine. I suspect might be on these guys. I don't oh, it's know on my not. list for sure. We'll see. My number nine is Deception Murder in Hong Kong. Because I really like the uh, idea of solving the crime. Hmm. But it makes you feel smart for it makes you feel smart if you are the forensic scientists because if you With put those clue, clues out good clues. and people are like that's oh it's this one and you're like yes you and me were thinking together but also if you figure it out too it feels smart or if sure. you're the murderer and you manage to mix and you pick that initial murder weapon that's really similar to someone else's murder weapon and everyone else goes for that person you feel very satisfied yes. i don't know the, the game here if, if you pull off now you can feel really dumb too if you went down the wrong route but when you do the right thing in this game feels great. Love Deception. And it makes me feel smart. That's a good one. Number eight. This is stuff being thrown all over this room. What's going on? <laughs> <laughs> Sir, my what number is your number eight? eight? My number eight is Azul Stained glass of Sintra. Ooh, the that game makes me feel stupid because I got like a negative. You got a negative score in that game? How? No, but I got a really low score. I scored many, many negative points. Okay. Well, I've uh, I've done that on my first game, but then I actually learned from my mistakes. And you were smart. Yeah, we we actually grew, but this is one of the games where while i'm playing the game i'm like yeah i did that yeah i took that from you you can't take that and you know it's uh, um like very a gangster. <laughs> very clever very clever moves can be done and and had in this game and while you're playing the game you feel very smart but at the end sometimes where you know this other person gets like 
you know, 15 million points on their last turn and like laps you or something like that. Uh, mm -hmm. There have been parts, times where something similar to that has happened and, and you don't feel very smart at that point. But while you're playing the game, there's a lot of ways to make clever moves. You can, uh, you know, it's very simple, but just a clever move can be simply, eh, I'm going to reset. Mm -hmm. I'm just going to set back and I'm going to let you take all eight of those blue gems or whatever mm -hmm. <laughs> is blue uh, glass panes right there. And, and you can get all those negative points. And that makes you feel smart, you know, uh, because you've, you've done something that also helped you from being hurt and hurt somebody else at the same time. So it's one of those games that just makes you feel better like you're making good decisions right. and and that's that's what i liked about it so number eight azul stained glass of Sintra. as a side note that's something i like when game designers do that's something i, I think I it's a little bit games. of a lost art in euro game designs euro games in my opinion used to have this all the time they gave you four choices in the whole game ever like there were four things you could pick but when you did them would always lead you to you feeling like, man, this is a clever game, and I feel clever playing it. Mm -hmm. Now it's like you have 18 choices, and you can't even see the consequences of what you do anymore until like that four feeling, days later. And that feeling is lost a little bit. Yeah. I I bemoan the state of the Euro games. My number eight <laughs> is a game which is clever in its communication, and that is. Hanabi. Hanabi. <laughs> Honeybee? No, Hanabi. Hanabi is um, probably very solvable, again, and if you play with the same people a lot, there will be that feeling of, we know how to break or bend this game a little bit, which I get, that's fine, and I, I, I understand, but... it is one of the most satisfactory things to be able to tell someone this card you are holding in this spot is a green card or whatever. And from that statement, they're like, okay, so if you chose to tell me that thing, that means you excluded from telling me this other thing, which means I can probably play this one that so-and-so told me earlier was a whatever, you know, and you do it and it's like, boom, look at that. And so I like that feeling of building information of, but it's just as important what you say as what you don't say, right? There's always, we, anybody who's played has had, has had those moments where folks who are pro probably new at the table continue to give someone information but won't tell them they're holding a five, which you really need to tell them at some point. So like, this is a this, that's a that, and that's a that. And eventually it comes back to that person, and they're like, well, I need to discard something. Even if they're not holding a five, you need to tell them they're <laughs> Oh, yeah, no, absolutely. <laughs> that is a five. <laughs> You have a handful of fives. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, I like the, the communication in this makes me feel clever when everybody's clicking. It's a group, it's a group think clever for me. So my number eight, Hanabi. I just realized that the uh, Sherlock Holmes copy of this never took off. No, it didn't. And I, I thought about putting it on the list too, but this is cleaner. Yeah. More people have played also, so you'd know what I'm talking about. My number eight's gonna show up higher in Sam's list. Which so is a lie. Skip it now? Which is a oh. lie. Because my number eight is Robo Rally. Here's the thing. Does that make you feel smart? My reason for liking this game is. Actually, no, it does because I actually did my program properly and everybody else screws up, <laughs> which screws me up. So, well, yeah. By comparison. It is going to. I'm, I'm making. I'm, you can't do that. We have slides. <laughs> Sorry. You can't do it. Sorry. I'm not going to do it. I wouldn't, put that, I wouldn't put that on my list. What about top 10 games that make you feel smarter than the other people at the table? <laughs> no. Well, actually, oh. <clears throat> anyhow, the reason I, I like grace that game the reason the I 10. like uh, uh, Robo uh, Rally is because um, I like the <laughs> I okay, so I <laughs> okay Robo <laughs> Rally, I enjoy it because I like. The satisfaction of seeing your programming work. And even if sometimes it works better because someone pushed you and then it even helps you out a little bit, you're like, I plan for that to happen. It rarely happens. Well, to some of us. If ever. I don't know. I just Somebody pushing you helps you? Well, here's the thing. I thought about putting quad heroes on the list, but you don't really program ahead in quad heroes. 
I thought about putting Volt on the list, mm-hmm. but I mean, Volt's pretty good too. But I don't know. Robo Rally is still that one. I just feel very satisfied when it works. Not saying it always works, but when it does work, I feel you, smart. You must feel like really, really satisfied and smart when it does happen to make up for all the times when it doesn't. I think you're like projecting what happens to you onto me. I'm okay at Robo Rally. Mm-hmm. I think figure being able to see the whole chain in your head quickly also is satisfactory. Yeah, you know what? I think that's what it is. As I'm putting them out, I'm like, that's good. Even if it messes up. Okay. Even if somebody, pu- in my if somebody head, pushes good. you, like even if someone pushes you, you know you did what you were supposed to do. Like if your plan had not been messed with, you would have ended up exactly what you wanted to. Right. Just I can't help you messed the me vagaries up. of fate. Of, no. oh, vagaries of nerds. <laughs> Other nerds. The nerds of vagrants. Wait, okay. Anyhow, vagrants. let's move on. All right. We definitely talk about something different now. Number seven. <laughs> this is. Come on. There's What's your number seven? Shark under the table, which we have all. Jumped over. All right, my number seven uh, is a game that makes me feel smart when I am losing. The infiltrator. That is Specter Ops. I thought of this. Mm. Specter Ops. I considered because it. People are like, <coughs> "Where is he? Where is, oh, is he over here? No." He's not a, and, and then they ask are you, you. Are you playing like, the Muppets? Like, Who are you like, playing Rover. against? <laughs> no. Uh, like that guy from Police Academy. <laughs> no, it's a. Uh, oh, yeah. Louis Armstrong. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. I, I see. Side. I see infiltrators here. No. <laughs> you guys need to shut up. Let me do my thing. <laughs> Okay. All right, so Specter Ops makes me feel smart when I'm the infiltrator and I am able to slide right through uh, the group of hunters and they have no clue where I am, even if they have a clue where I am and I'm still able to stay away from them. That is a really cool thing. Now, part of that is definitely the game mechanisms because you have those uh, cards that the uh, infiltrator has that... Uh, they can use special abilities to, mm-hmm. you know, smoke screens over here or, you know, flashbangs over there to draw attention away so that you can scoot by and all this other kind of stuff. And, and, and there's definitely those mechanisms that are built in there. But for the most part, you are the one that's being clever, being sneaky, uh, moving over this way where they th- where, when they thought you were going to go this way and all this other kind of stuff. So uh, that's really why it made the list. And it probably could be um, higher possibly on the list because I do really enjoy the game. But there's also those times where I've played the game and I'm like, I had no Sure. Had no chance, <laughs> no chance. Wait, are you only saying this from the hunted point of view? Because I think you can feel smart the other way. I'm like, no, 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 you I can. Know exactly but I, where he is. I enjoy, I enjoy the other. I enjoy being the infiltrator more than the hunter. That's why so. Sam and I wanted to play the game because I also enjoy being that guy too. <laughs> I'm like, well, someone's got to be the. Hunters. I almost put on my list uh, Fear of Dracula for that yeah, reason. Yeah, same reason. Yeah. yeah. All right, so that's I think my number that, seven. That works in that one too. Specter ops, ops. All right, my number seven is Onitama. And in Onitama, that's a good pick. You have just these five cards that you need to read, kind of internalize, also kind of see how they work together, and then on top of that, know when to hold them. And no, no, when no, when to fold them. them. <laughs> no, <laughs> when to uh, uh, walk away. No, when to smack run. the uh, guy. Folks, no, this is when, when to run. To, uh, yeah. You never count your on a time Money. while you're sitting at, at the, the table. table. There'll be time enough oh, my to word. count. Did you lose tr- did you? When the dealing's done. Yeah. I've lost control. Never had it. Hold on, let me tuck my ears in. You have a massive in head. My, in my hats, it's not hard. Um, I like that, especially, that's the main reason that put it on the list for me was that you also have to know not when to put, when not to put a card back in the center, you know, even if it might give you a great power now, like a good move right now, having that in the tank, having that in reserve, might win you the game later. 
and seeing that a few turns ahead. Being like, well, you know, the cards you have don't do a lot of lateral movement. You're going to be coming towards me. You're not going to be able to help yourself. And I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to get you with this one. I'm going to hold it. Uh, so I'll just use the other one. Use it, put it back in the center. Whatever you put there, I use that, put it back in the center. And when I'm ready, I'm going to fire off this one. I like that. That's clever. And it's a game where it feels like the, the choices are not necessarily an entire blooming tree, but linking a few of those together is going to get you that win. You know, Not to say I win all the time or anything, but I'm saying just seeing that or pursuing that. And that's what I like about it. That's what makes me feel, you know, smart about that one. So Onitama, uh, really fun, very simple one that allows for that feeling. Probably the simplest game on the list, actually, we need that to still this. allows you to do that. We need to play this game so I can make you feel stupid. All I'm, right. I'm smart. Speaking of stupid, my number seven e poop you can. is Witness. Now, I like Witness. Is that the one? That's where you whisper in, your, in the people's Witness ears. me! Okay, so this game you has to be played with four players exactly. And, and you, four of them are... are um, detectives. No, you have, no. Uh, you're all detective. You each get a book. You look at the page in your book. You have to whisper clues to each other about what you see. There's four Amish detectives and one... Um, one so oh, you're God, the, <laughs> every time with the stupid <laughs> right? Han Solo movie. <laughs> Harrison Ford, you That mo- guy, line. whatever. I Anyhow, think it was Han Solo. So the, the point of the fact is that you have to whisper the information around. I very rarely solve these cases. It's a great bind because, thing, right? Yes, because, Kinda, the, yeah. because yeah. the past information, first of all, even if you could just talk outright, I would imagine you don't always solve the cases. Even right. if you could just say out loud the stuff. Whispering it compounds the problem. But the reason witness makes me feel smart is because every time I'm done playing, I think that at least one of the people at my table is an idiot. So I feel smarter than them. Now, I know that's not the kindest way to put this. Definitely not. <laughs> but it's the truth. Every time I play Witness, I'm like, idiot! I say it in my head. Sure. Yeah, uh, this was actually one I could have seen myself putting on my list because I think it is... It's just a really clever game. It is. It's a really cool game, and it's super, it's so specific. I mean, it it is is a very, you need four people. Those people need to like deduction and don't have a problem whispering in someone else's ear. You know, some people don't like that. Come here, I whisper your your ear right now. HR. I told you I fired. (laughs) All right, anyway, my number seven, Witness. Number six. All right, what do you got for number six? My number six. And this is a game where uh, it made me feel very smart while I was playing it. Um, Going back to uh, a couple of different uh, plays that I had the last time I was over in England. Mm-hmm. And this is called mm-hmm. Timeline British History. Now, I did I think not, this is specific. I did not win either of these games. What? <laughs> I'm waiting. <laughs> huh? I'm waiting. Let's go. You're I don't waiting know what he's for waiting what? for. Well, what are you waiting for? I don't for? know what he's laughing about, but I'm afraid you're about to talk about American superiority. But No. No, I was not. I did not win. But I felt very smart. Because I came very close to winning, ah. and I know very little about British history. Um, well, maybe you know more than you're letting on, then. Oh, maybe. Or maybe I was well, just able to... you give yourself credit for, I should uh, say. Maybe so. So you're smarter know. than you think you are. Are you smarter In than a fifth grader would this say? this specific <laughs> game... Yes! No. That's like such a simple question. We're all smarter than fifth graders. I like to see them try to do some of the tax things I'm doing. Yeah, that's Get true. Get out of my face, fifth grader. You mean some of the tax things that you're Daddy, going to? I do stuff every thing. I do stuff every day that a fifth grader cannot do. How do you know? I want to go on a game show called Are You Stronger Than I've Fifth Grader? I've had more grader. fifth graders than both you combined. So, yes, I know. That's true. Of course, it's a zero. But I mean. <laughs> uh, you were st- it was still a true statement. I'm just saying, I want to go on a TV show called Are You Stronger Than a Fifth Grader? <laughs> <laughs> 
Get out of my face, kids. That's what I'm talking about. <laughs> That's the show I want to be on. Anyway, uh, I, I, I digress. Yes. Um, both We've only digressed do. a couple Every times. Every single time it's my turn to go. Uh, timeline British history just made me feel smart uh, because I came really close to beating a bunch of Brits at their own history. But I didn't. They still won. But I felt smart in my loss. That's my number six timeline, British history. <laughs> I love how it's this one specifically because of that. That's cool. Because uh, playing just timeline and getting anything right, I feel smart. Yeah. If I get anything, I'm like, really? Yeah. All right. <laughs> Good uh, job. My, my, yeah, my historical timelining is not what about very strong. What about fauna? That's, it depends who I'm playing with, <laughs> largely, and whether they openly mock my mistakes. <laughs> My number six is not Fauna. None of these will ever be Fauna. <laughs> this is Factory Funner. I knew you'd put this one. Because I'm uh, honestly, I'm pretty good at it. It's one of it's the only one I will say that about on this list. Uh, I am pretty good at figuring that out. I think I see. I have a, a fairly easy time of seeing where like the connections go and all that, so I can spot that out. And then yeah, there's the drafting of the tiles and all of that stuff. But then running the piping from one machine, feeding into another, getting everything to work without spending too much money on that piping, that's the trick. And there's even turns where you don't want to take a machine, where you're, you look at what's available and you go, no, those are all going to cost me more than they make me. And again, it's just about being able to see that. Now, this is a game that you do get better at by playing more, so you feel smarter the more you play. But... Um, it still feels good to be able to... Mersmert. Mersmert. To Mer -smert. be able to uh, pull this off, you know. So, yeah, absolutely. This one does the trick. Factory Funner. All right, my number six is kind of in the line of a few games you guys have already said, basically, where when you get the engine going, it makes you feel smart. Mine is Terraforming Mars. Okay. I also feel, like Z just said, that I'm better at this than worse, if that makes sense. Mm -hmm. Like, when I play Terraforming Mars... I feel like I understand it. There's a lot of these Euro games, I'm like, these are great. I'm just glad to play. Like, right. I play Russian Railroads when it's done. Oh, well, you know, I'm just glad that I was involved with that game. I'm definitely not feeling smart at the end. But Terraforming Mars, I do feel pretty good at the end of it. Even if I don't win, I feel like I had a chance over the course of the game. I love seeing these combos come across at, you know, there's strategy and tactics in games, and in Terraforming Mars, I always find that strategy early on. Me, oh, this one I'm going to go for amoebas. This one I'm going to go for, you know, plants. I'm going to do iron and steel production. Whatever it is, okay. that's what I'm going to follow through on that game. So that is my number six, Terraforming Mars. Number five. It's all you. You're like a disapproving you father guys are over there. Five. You're I'm exactly telling you, man. Five. What is going on here? <laughs> exactly five. All right, my number five is um, uh, a game that I was able to. I think I got the drop on the other guys on this game. I, I found it before they yeah, did. The drop on me, God. And is this a two-player uh, game? Yes. What is it? Is it one that you've mentioned on other lists? Yes. Is it your favorite publisher of all time? No. I bet it. Does the publisher's name start with Emp? Yes. <laughs> I got it! That's Emp? Emperor S4. Hana, uh, oh, Emp. Ha Hanami Koji. Uh, I couldn't Hanami say the name Koji. again because I, <laughs> I couldn't. But oh, uh, Koji, this yeah. one... This there's one there's just, no game like this one to make me feel dumb. Well, especially when you're playing me that's because correct. that's what I'm coming back to whenever I feel like this game makes me feel smart is because because I'm stupid no you're usually the card the card game king and I whooped you something serious in this game and it made me feel really smart because usually you whoop me you whoop me at even the games that I'm good at and you still whoop me oh, at that's it. right I whoop my blood rage and that's right he does whoop. more often than not but this little card game, it's a little card game. Yeah, I dismiss it. <laughs> okay. Well, I dismiss it because Sam taught it to me, so I just assume he taught me something wrong. Oh, ho, ho. That's no, man, there's like happened. six rules in this game. It's I easy. know, I looked at the rule book halfway through. The reason this makes you, you feel did. clever is because you have to make four of the very same decisions that your opponent has to make. It has a very similar feel to Onitama mm -hmm. in that respect. That's true. Because That's true. you have the same decisions that you have to make. You have... 
Uh, now, the cards that you have to make those decisions with are different. Um, so, but that's where the cleverness comes into is, is how can I make these decisions? Uh, like one of them is you have to put four cards on the table, two groups of two. Mm -hmm. Your opponent has to get to choose two of them and then you keep the others. Um, or you put three. Your opponent chooses one and you keep the other two. Right. And choosing what cards uh, to do that with, uh, those kinds of decisions with, is ultimately what either wins you or loses you the game. And when, it, when you win the game, you feel really smart. You feel like you definitely outfoxed your opponent. Um, and that's, that's why it's on my list. Because those decisions, while they're very simple, they're very rudimentary almost, um, they can really make you feel clever. Uh, and that, that's that's why I made the list. My number five, uh -huh, Nami Koji. All right. My number five is honestly one I assume and expect and will be disappointed <laughs> if it is not on Tom's list. Uh-oh. <laughs> oh, no. My number five is Chronicles of Crime. Chronicles of Crime. We will see. That's a yes. Ooh, that's a yes. I'm a detective. Chronicles of Crime is a game we that allows you to investigate a who done it normally and you are trying to figure out you know what what happened who did it that sort of thing but it's hard to not feel clever in the game because you are going to be asking of people uh, you know a character that you scan with your phone you're gonna be asking that character about anything else going on in the game and that combination that you come up with is gonna make you feel clever again these are all pre-programmed you are doing nothing in this game that's clever but it's going to make you feel clever because you go, hmm, this guy was at the park, right? Yesterday in the game, you know, in game sense. So why don't we ask him about this thing we found at the park yesterday? So you scan that dude's card, you scan the thing, and suddenly he goes, oh, yeah, yeah, I saw that. It was sitting there on the side of the road. And then a donkey came by and kicked it. And um, you're <laughs> Why like... Why is there a donkey in all your stories? Because the donkeys are fabulous. And so it's like, aha, we discovered something. You feel clever about that. And that's why this one manages to do it. It's the best, it's the most illusion-driven one probably of the whole list. Because it definitely is all programmed. But it still manages to make you feel like you came up with an answer to something. Weren't you saying at the beginning of the list that you didn't like games that did that? Or that you weren't going to have games that did that on the list? I thought you said that you didn't like it when games were like, oh, look what you did. You did so good. No, you're saying he does no, no, like I that. I do. I'm saying the games are so well put together that they manage to fool you into thinking you're doing something clever. Okay. When clearly the designer and the developers mm -hmm. made it available for you to feel that way. Okay. Even though you're not really doing anything cool. that they haven't, you know, pre set up for you. And in this one more so because they actually have to like program an app. So it's really like it's not generating anything you came up with that no one's seen. I like that. I like that feeling. So we'll get to a little bit more of it when you say it. My number five though. <laughs> Chronicles of Crime. My number five is a big, grandiose game called Gloomhaven. Gloomhaven. Now, the reason I like Gloomhaven so much is because the game requires you to not just roll a bunch of dice and try to smash everything down. Mm -hmm. It's clever play of cards. There's still luck in it. There's still luck in the card flipping that you do in this game. It's just that the actual... Um, how you put those combos of cards together, it feels like you did something really good. And again, this is kind of why I almost prefer playing it solo because I have the two characters and I'm going to sit there and say, here's how we're going to work together. If I'm playing with somebody else, their <laughs> lack of, their lack of uh, communication and hive mind with me is going to cause some problems. He doesn't play this game with other people. When was the last time you played with anybody else? Like ever? This or game. Th not ever. Not in the last 365 days anyway. <laughs> really? Yeah, this might have made my list had I been able to play it. Blah, 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 blah. I played it one time. So did that I. That one day. You both did not seem to enjoy that play that much. I wouldn't know. I played you it one either. time. You didn't either. You didn't either. I would, have, I would have not it. guessed it was your oh, favorite game it, after that's that. That's because it was too hard. I lowered the ease and I was like, what? No. You lowered yeah. the ease? He lowered the ease. <laughs> Now it yeah, says, now, now it says, we would have liked now to it have says experienced Gloomhaven. 
Gloomhaven. I'm sorry, I raised the E's. No, the E not lowered. is lowered. Gloomhaven? <laughs> oh, my word. Gloomhaven. That's the stupidest joke of the day. Come on, cat. That's a, that's a chronology. Move to number four. Move to strike. Number four. Roy, you got to help me, man. I'm over here with a couple weirdos. <laughs> Sorry. My number four is a game that I haven't talked a lot about in a long time. As a matter of fact, I believe I already, uh, I believe I got rid of my copy of it for quite some, uh, quite some time ago. But it's because it never, it just wasn't hitting the table. Okay. Uh, that is Jim Blow. Jim uh, Blow is one of those things. I'm, I am more of a spatial, visual, spatial thinker than, than I am cranial or however you want to say it. Well, it ain't linguistic. That's for sure. <laughs> I don't think any of us are high yeah. on that list. But uh, so me. being able to see clever placement of these different shapes of uh, uh, gems and stuff like that and, and being able to basically the, the point of the game is that you start from one of the apexes of that, uh, what is that, a hexagon? Or, uh, yes, yes. And, and you're trying to place all of your uh, pieces out, and your pieces are different shapes of gems, and the person who is able to get the most of theirs, their gems on the board is the winner. And so it becomes this, uh, this game of, of, of putting out these different pieces in these weird forms and being able to see how they're able to kind of uh, envelop other people's pieces right. and and then you can try to form bridges so that you can place more pieces out around all of your other uh, opponents pieces there's a lot of clever thought that goes into this game and that's why it makes me feel smart I did not do very well at the game more often than not but I still felt very clever in the game because I was able to figure out different um, strategies of, of working around everybody else's pieces. So uh, this one was one of the first ones that I thought it would, would make the list. My number four, Jim Blue. I've never played this one. When you play uh, next to a piece you've already played, is it like... You have to go one, one bridge away, one spine away. Like you have to draw a line along a hexagon from one piece to another. Okay. It's easier to show than it is to I say. I mean, because I know, like, you know, Blockus is just corner to corner. This is essentially no, no, no. corner to corner. It's just... Corner to corner on the hexes? Yeah. yeah if you have these... <laughs> oh, this is really bad. <laughs> this is great for video, too. Uh, if you have these things right here, yeah. and you place a thing, one of your pieces goes right here. Yeah, that's right. You have to follow this spine, and you can place right here. Got it. Or this spine and place right Watch here. Watch my video review, I explain it. Yeah. I will do that. Actually, let me fire it up. He no. knows. Uh, no, I understood now that he said that. Okay, so my number next is... Number next? Well, uh, this four. one. Okay, my number four is a deduction game. Probably the smallest deduction game I've ever played. And it's also a cooperative one. It's called the Shipwreck Arcana. I don't think you guys have, either one of you have, have played this little game. I've never heard of it. Um, I reviewed it maybe six months ago or something like that. It's a cool cover. It's a very small little package. That you can't really make out on the table. No, it's all white. I mean, it is yeah. all just almost an entirely white box. But anyway, up. there's these cards out there on the table. And everybody has a set of numbers in front of them, one through seven. And then what you do is you pull two tokens, two numbered tokens from a bag. And you have to assign one of them to one of the cards out there while keeping the other one hidden. Again, the numbers go one through seven. The other players have to figure out which is the one you kept based on the one you played. And the cards in the center have different rules you have to follow, basically. Like, oh, you can play, play your lowest of the two here if they are within two numbers or, or fewer. That sort of thing, right? Like, oh, if the sum is odd, you can play one of them here. That kind of thing is what you're doing. I really enjoy that. I really like in this game you are able to, as a hive mind again, start thinking about, well, it's not just he played there, so that entails his other tile is that. It's he didn't play here. And he would have if he was holding a six. So we can eliminate that. For a tiny little package with a few cards and some little wooden tokens, I found the ratio of sort of aha moments to to game length huh. and involvement to be really high. I was very impressed with this one. Um, so I really like it a lot. 
I think you would like it as well. Sam, not so much. I think I would like it just from your explanation there. Yeah, I think so. Maybe I'll bring it in and you can ignore it. Uh, my number four, <laughs> the Shipwreck Arcana. My number four is a game that I feel very smart at depending on my partner. But when I have the right partner, and I would like to clarify before I introduce this one, that this is not pointed at anyone in this room at all. Oh. I had this on a list despite that game. Pretty sure he's talking about... Time's up. Okay, so Time's Up is the game. Yeah, so to clarify... About is it Roy? Are you talking about Roy? <laughs> Roy Kennedy. Uh, no, no, I'm not... I'm, I'm, I'm really specific. Roy, are you that. smart? <laughs> I'm not talking about... No. I'm talking about when you are. <laughs> like, like when Jason and I play this game together, I feel very... Smart. In sync. Yes, yes. It's And when you're in sync with your partner in this game, like it's just... It's aces, man. You're just like... Getting them back and forth. And it really feels good. I really love... I mean, you can have the opposite extreme when you have a partner and you're both maybe really good at games, really smart people, but you have no right, psychic no... connection or whatever it is. Yeah. I'm like, Robert. Psychic connection. Like, I played with a guy one time. I remember this in Korea who is one of the smartest people I've ever met, but he didn't know who Robert E. Lee was. And so I was like, Confederate Civil that? War general. Like the author, Robert E. Lee. He was also an author, yes. Anyway, so I was talking about the Civil War general, and I said, Civil War general, the main guy in charge of the Confederates. And he was like, I don't know Bruce. who that is. I said, it's a very common last name in Korea. And Bruce he was Lee. like, Kim Park. And I was like, <laughs> slap him. <laughs> Come on now. Robert E. Um, Park. But that happens sometimes. But when it doesn't happen, when you just go, and they're like, John Jacob Jingleheimer Schmidt. And you're like, yes, how'd you know? I love that sort of thing. Time's up. Makes when me feel works. smart. Sorry, who didn't it's... know who Robert E. Lee was? Douglas. Are you serious? I'm telling you, that guy's super smart. He was like almost, I'd give him something and he'd be like. He good. was in the army. How could he not know who Robert E. Lee was? Well, he's in the army that's no, no, got rid on. of the he's Confederate the armies. Army. He's out in the Union. You don't have to learn about Confederate officers. Um, sorry, that is part of America's history. You should know it, period. Anyhow, my number four. Time's up. Number three. My number three uh, was actually mentioned as we were talking about Jimblo. Get by out. Mr. Garcia. Are you serious to put Jimblo and Blockus on the list? Blockus 3D. Ooh. Rumus. Rumus. Yes, Rumus. Uh, that's the, that's the uh, copy that I have. That's I have you Rumus. You say Rumus. Um, it looks better. Uh, this is what you can see in the store now. The components, Garbage. I believe, uh, screen, which you can go to. <laughs> Please, thank you. That is actually Rumus. Oh, look at that gorgeousness. Um, now, I like this better. I like the rustic look of it better. This game looks than much the, better than what they ended up doing with than it. Than the technical or No, yeah, whatever. I agree. This this version looks... Well, it's 3D. It, looks just, it just looks like blocky. very well, I mean, uh, anemic on the The new one, one just has two, like the color. There's no swirl in it was yeah, part of it, right? right? Correct. And this one had all those different bases. The theme is obviously very pasted on, but it had the cool, like... Build a pyramid. Build a big wall. Mm -hmm. It had the Lazy Susan thing. Yes. They, oh, it still has the... Do they have that in the new yeah, ones? Yeah, it still has the Lazy Susan right. in it. I used to have Rumus. I, I thought it was a really gorgeous game. Yeah. The, the point of this game, much like in Jimbo, you're trying to get rid of as many of your pieces as possible, but you have the, uh, the restriction of a, a certain shape of grid. Right. On the playing service, and you can go as high as you want, but you have to stay within that thing. And only certain things, uh, certain parts of the board can have certain levels. That's right. Yeah. So uh, I really enjoy this. It's a, it's another spatial abstract game that uh, I've I've done very well at over the past uh, past few years, and I really uh, have have smelt uh, smelt felt very smart. If you smelt melted, very fart, then you probably. <laughs> you know, <laughs> Delta. <it. laughs> Thanks for clarifying there. <laughs> That's my number three. All right, my number three Locus is a game. three D. Game so called. Kind of there too. <laughs> oh, you did it there also. Not, you not dork. on purpose. Not on purpose. Of course, you did it on purpose. Purpose. My number three is a game called Cryptid. This uh, is like my number eleven, probably. Yeah. Encrypted. You are trying to figure out where some creature, some cryptid, is hiding. On the board, 
And everybody has a piece of that ultimate puzzle. There is a, you know, your part of the puzzle might be, it is not within the sand spaces, as you can see there. And so you know that when someone asks you whether it's in one of those sand spaces, you say, no, it cannot possibly be. If somebody asks you about one of the outside ones, it might be. So you put out a different little cube to denote that. Whoever's the best at sort of putting all these pieces of information together, asking about the right places on the board, is going to probably pull out ahead. That's what the game's about. And I like the mental gymnastics that this game invites. This idea of, well, looking at the cubes you've put out, because it all stays on the board, and it looks like maybe your thing is just don't be near the water, maybe? And then over here we've got this, don't be near that, or maybe it has to be within this thing. So I'm going to guess here. Could it be here? You know, that, and putting it together with your own piece. I, I, it's very clever. And you're going to, if you enjoy deduction, but you don't want a lot of bookkeeping, this one the bookkeeping's on the table. You can check it at any time. I like that, you know. But you can't leave? Oh, I'm sorry, go ahead. You can check it oh. at check-in. I think so you could check in any time. Anyway. Don't look over here. My number three is Hotel California. <laughs> <laughs> All right, my number three Roach Hotel. is a brand new game called First Contact. This is from Oh, Cosmo man, Jung this Games. shot to the top for you. Well, in this category. You makes you feel smart. It then. does. So, First Contact, half the players are aliens, the other half are humans. Okay. The aliens need something. It, we don't know what it is. Juice? 20, is it juice? Well, it could be. There's 25 cards laid out, and you need some different items that are on the board. So, for example, in this picture, you might need a pig, you might need money, you might need a turtle or a snake or whatever. The aliens have a secret language. Or not a secret, they just have a language. The humans don't understand the language. So you, the humans have to, the aliens have to slowly teach the humans what their language is, then use their language oh, to get the uh, humans to guess what items they need. So there's one alien winner and one human winner. And so you're drawing these weird squiggles and you're slowly like, okay, that word must mean that. And then they use that and that other word. So they use tasty and animal pig. You know, you, you, you kind of put them together. I thought you said bacon was overrated. I have a question. I did say bacon was overrated. Why don't the, pork why, is not. Why don't the aliens speak American? <laughs> is there a reason? I don't understand this game. I will say that that cover really doesn't mesh well with the components that you... I mean, the components look really super boring. That actually well, it's like a bunch of little illustrations. Well, no, yeah, they're a bunch of little... The, the humans are all ancient Egyptians because that's the only people aliens contacted. Um, but they, there's a bunch of whiteboards and stuff. There's, there's more pieces, but it's not about the components. It's about this mind back and forth. You're drawing on whiteboards. Here's the symbol. I've got to play this game. It sounds really neat. I think I would enjoy um, it. I'm going to bring how's it. The, uh -huh. My only question is, how's the bookkeeping in this? Like, how's the memory element? Do I have to remember, like, oh, he did a squiggly and three oh, dots. Oh, no, no, you can write it down. Each person has their own board. So if you do a squiggly, I'll be like, I think it's here, and I'll just put a squiggly there. Sometimes I'll put a squiggly with a question mark because I'm not sure it's at that spot. Hmm. But it's not that hard to keep track of. Okay. It, yeah, it's not one of those games where you have to, like, like um, someone on the chat was talking about sleuth. Sleuth, I have to, like, remember stuff oh, and man. write it down. Right, right, right. Yeah, now this okay. one. And so, again, it gives you, it's not as hard as it sounds, like learning a new language. Is that hard? Yes. In this game, it's not. So I like it. First contact, my number three. All right. Number two. My number two. Has already been mentioned by... A crossover? Mr. Z Garcia. Wait. What did you mention that he would have... That Sam would say? First time I played this game, it was uh, at a steakhouse while we were waiting for oh. our steaks to be played. This is, I guess, to be brought. You and your. This one I'm time. sorry. When this I beat one people time. that are smarter than me, it makes me feel smart. This the one time I beat this fool. <laughs> I beat him by myself. Usually when we are playing it's Jason. It's Onitama, by the way. When we play Jason, yeah, it is Onitama. Uh, when we are playing Jason, we are always, and this is universally known, we are playing for second place because okay. Jason absolutely, yes, you I too. whooped him a, this year once or twice. Yeah, once. 
when I'm playing Jason, I couldn't get away fast enough, and now I'm <laughs> stuck playing Jason. Onitama is definitely everything, much like what was the other one, uh, Hanami Koji. Um, very, very similar in feel as far as the decisions you have to make are very similar to the decisions your opponent has to make. And when you win, you literally have done better than your opponent. <laughs> Period. There's there's just no two ways around it. Unless so, they played so poor. Yeah, okay, never mind. You're yes, right. thank you. Uh, so that's really what it, you have five cards. You only use five cards a game. And that's another one of the really cool things about the game. You have so many cards that come in just the base box uh, that you have a lot of replayability within the game because you only use five of them at a time. But you have the same moves that your opponent has. You, If you lose, you literally gave them the ability to beat you. That's right. And when you win, you used what they gave you to beat them. <laughs> so it, it, this was definitely every time I play this game and I win, I feel incredibly smart, at least smarter than the person across the table, no matter how young or old they might be. Um, <laughs> Uh, so that's my number two, Onitama. <laughs> All right, my number two sounds a lot like Cryptid, actually, but it's a different game. It's called Decrypto. Decrypto is my number two. This is a word game. It's the only word game on here. Word games do not normally make me feel smart. But in this one, <clears throat> you um, what I like about it is you can feel smart in the way or clever in the way in the game sorry in different ways and i like that because there are times when you need to get across to your teammates what one of your words is without being too obvious you have hidden words i'm not going to try to explain this game because it's a headache so that's one way in which you can feel smart is try to get something under the radar of your opponents but still get your partners to figure it out and how clever you are, how much you can deviate from something obvious, and still they'll go like, mm -hmm, we get it. <laughs> and then on the other side of that, every turn on the other side of that equation, you are listening to clues going, is the, is the clue horse from the first round related to glue this round? Or is glue have to do with paper, which was a different clue in the first round? That, I'm trying to figure that out. The more rounds that go on, the more information you got. The game manages to make you feel, when you pull it, you know, like really pull something out of the bag there and you go, aha, gotcha, you messed up. These yeah. things go together. That feels clever. It feels good. And you, you know, I, I, again, I don't normally feel that way when I'm playing word games. Word games are rough. You know, things like code names, for example, is like the opposite of this list for me. When I play code names, I feel about as dumb as it comes. I cannot figure out when i play with z i also feel oh it's like a bag of rocks as dumb as, yeah. i'm a i'm a yeah man so i don't think we played together actually in code names oh i try to avoid playing games with you no matter what they are but <laughs> um but the crypto is is a good one uh, for for helping that feeling anyway that's my number two my number two has already been mentioned was it by me by z garcia Ooh, i picked a good list Chronicles of Crime. Oh, I got you. I got you. Yeah, no, for sure. Here's the thing. Chronicles of Crime is often compared to Detective and even more the more long-running game, the Sherlock Holmes Consulting Detective. Yes. Sherlock Holmes Consulting Detective, by its very nature, makes you feel dumb. Yes. Because even if you solve it at the end, that insufferable Sherlock Holmes will show up and he'll go, well... Let me explain. You've solved it. I solved it in three moves. I went to this location, this location, this location, solved it. I mean, I really want to... I should have put Sherlock Holmes on that annoying character list we did. <laughs> you want to throttle him. Because you really do. Because he'll say, I went to this location. You're like, you just randomly picked the right location. Yeah, I gave you the information. I, how was I supposed to know you had to go there? Holmes? <laughs> Get out of my face. What's up, Holmes? <laughs> so, I, I like Chronicles of Crime because it doesn't have that dumb... Thing. It, it, yes, when it comes down to it, if you look at the case overall, even the harder cases, they're not that hard, but it's so thematic and it makes you feel, it gives you the same feeling when you watch one of those procedural crime things and you, you're like, you know, that's a red herring, that person they're talking to there. That, that person, guaranteed that's it when it's over. You're like, I told you, I told you, honey, that was the guy. If you're talking that's how this a, game feels. If you're talking to a fish, you need to rethink your life. 
A red herring. Yeah. Right. So, uh, Chronicles Crime, and I just played the newest expansion for it, Noir, which is even more entertaining. I think it gives even more, like, you can break into stuff. And, That's awesome. Like, we, I, we ran into this guy, and he was, like, drunk. And he was, like, not answering any of our questions. So we slapped him around a little bit, then he started answering our questions. <laughs> Let like, me tell you about this great game. In it, you get to slap people around. No, look, I'm telling you. Why don't I you get him some help? You know what I mean? He's clearly in trouble. He's drunk. Get him some coffee. It was the middle of the well, day, I did. bet. It didn't say exactly what we don't did. Slap him oh, around. Help him go, out. Him like, give him a few but, dollars. But we got to this guy, and he was kind of mumbling, and I was like, I know this guy knows something. Okay. And it just felt, it felt really good to figure that out. This game... Violence. You beat the Loving crime. Chronicles of Crime. Loving it. It is it is debased. It is Chronicles of Crime. Waterboarding homeless. <laughs> no! Oh wow. No! That's my number two. And finally, number one. Longest transition ever. My number one uh, is a game where you can cooperatively uh, feel smart or smirt, and that is Rising Five Runes of Astros. Ooh. Uh, this one makes. <laughs> you love this game so much. I do. I you really put on so many it. lists. I thought now, about it, but no way. It's mastermind. It doesn't make you feel that smart. It does to me because you can, I mean, one of the reasons why it makes me feel smart is that it has all of the stuff, the app, it's an app-driven game, uh, or not driven, but app-assisted game, and the app has everything there, every possible, well, not every possible, but every configuration that you have chosen for the different gates, it keeps it stored for you. So you can go back, you don't have to remember it, but you can go back, it's one of those things where it helps you feel smarter because it, 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 uh, uh, accounts for every choice that you've made up until that point and that helps you feel smarter about yourself and I, I can't when you win you definitely feel smart when you lose you still feel smart just not smart enough hmm. because you didn't figure it out fast enough you know you would have figured it out but you didn't figure it out fast enough what and if that's, you always win then you need to Play other games and leave I've us won, alone. I've won like the last four times I've played that game. It's very easy. You have to you have to use the modifications. Oh, okay, thanks. That is, <laughs> yes, I'm stupid. Everybody. Friends that make me feel Thank smart. You. I don't think we made the sense. No, I just don't know. I think it's like the mastermind part of that game is definitely fun and it's clever, but it's one of the occasions in which I feel the game is smart. The app is super smart. Totally hands off. But it doesn't necessarily make me feel smart. No, I don't know. I actually agree with Sam. It makes me feel smart because I beat it. I like I like beating stuff. Hmm. So I, I, I'm still with you, Sam. Z Z is Z is a jerk. I'm disagreeing with one of Sam's picks. I think I'm allowed. So, but Sam, they want to know why you didn't put this as number five. Because I like it better. <laughs> the All rule right. didn't apply to the other nine. <laughs> no, he didn't. He only matched up what one of them, right? Nine. Number yeah, nine, nine was nine. That's the only one you matched and up, right? Three D was three, but it, that was a coincidence. Yeah, it was coincidence. No, it was on purpose. No, it wasn't. It stick to find a gimmick. All right, my number one is Exit the Game. Uh, this could have been, you know, any of these sort of a puzzly ones, but I like this one. I guess the best because it not 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 even that I like it the best actually I like unlock better than this, but I think this manages to make me feel more clever. In unlock, finding a number written somewhere doesn't feel clever. You know, See, in unlock, you look at a card. One. I debated on this one because I wanted to put it on my list, but the problem is is that it makes me feel dumb as much as it makes me feel smart. I think it's like it evens out. And I thought that very thing, actually, which is why I debated between this being my one and not being my one. I was actually going to switch some around. You're right. You're 100% right. This makes me feel as dumb, as much, if not more, as it makes me feel clever. But feeling dumb at the same session does not exclude <laughs> feeling smart. I love this. Like, that, 
that whole sentence probably has never been said before. I hope so. So, yes, even though I'm spending a lot of the time going, man, this is too much for me. I can't figure this out. When I finally get something, that moment, it's like, aha, I solved it. What's the next puzzle? <coughs> um, so, yeah, exit the board game uh, or, you know, unlock if you like those or whatever. Any of these sort of puzzle uh, escape room in a box things. Um, I'm surprised you didn't put any of these on, but maybe... Again, I, I really considered the whole escape room unlock, whatever they are. And then I was like, man, for every time, I'm like, yeah! A lot, I mean, that's why I do them with groups, because I'm sitting there going, I don't know, and my kid will be like, why don't you do this? Oh, yeah. My eight-year-old just kind of pointed out something I didn't know. Which is fun to do as a group. It's still fun. It just doesn't make me feel smart. Because okay. in that case, I'm not smarter than a fifth grader. I'd like to go back earlier in the tape and delete something I said. Yeah. You are still stronger than a fifth grader. <laughs> That's something you said. I would, uh, you could get on my case for slapping a drug guy, but you're the one talking about beating up fifth graders. I'm All right. I believe it was an arm wrestling competition. Yeah. No, that was a kid's neck he was bringing down. Nope. No. Okay, my number one. Is their leg. <laughs> <laughs> my number one. <laughs> Go, what is it? The opinions of the show. Okay, anyway, the, my number one is Awkward Guests. A deduction game was bound to be Man. on the list at some point. I, I love, 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 love this game. It's such a good deduction game. And in this game, you are going to figure out what it is. It's just by the very nature. Okay. You want to figure it out faster than everybody else. That's what it is. It's not a wrench or a frying pan. Or a pool cue or a shovel. It just wasn't a blunt weapon. Okay. So has a little bit of almost deception in it, in a sense. And then you, so you'll cross those off your sheet. But this clue is a pretty powerful clue. That's why there's a three in the corner. So there's a lot of clues that are smaller clues. Okay. And you're sharing clues with other people, trying not to share too good of clues. And I'll sit there and go, okay, I'm going to give this clue to Z. It's a pretty good clue, but I'm pretty sure he already knows his information, so I'm wasting his time. Hopefully. Sure, sure. Uh, uh, this game, I'm really Does excited that mean, to is see. It, is it similar, in, at least in some structural way, to Clue? Yes, except that there's a lot of Clue cards. The system where you take 100 cards... I mean, there's like, I mean, like 450 cards, and you take a certain subset of them, and it has an exact solution. That's like mind boggling to me how that works. Really? Yeah, you build this deck at the beginning, and that deck has one solution. You don't need well, to that see. That is like cryptid, which is pretty clever, too. Sure, and you know what? Because yeah, encrypted, cryptid, it's like does, these three rules give you one exact location on the board. This is cleverer. Because it has a hundred cards doing this rather than three clues. Is the subset always something they tell you specifically? Take these? Oh, there's like a whole bunch of subsets. You And it's a little actually, that's the one negative thing at the beginning of the game. I'm like, I need card Set four, up. seven, 23. You put them all in sure, and shuffle them. Sure, sure. But it's like clue, but you're also tracking the way the murderer went through the house. So if you can say, oh, he oh. didn't go in the library, I can, I can cancel out. The, any weapons that are found in the library. Oh, wow. It's really, really good. Uh, I don't know when it's being, when the Kickstarter's delivering, but man, I love this game. And it makes me feel smart. A lot of these games, so we mentioned Sleuth earlier. When I'm done playing Sleuth, if I got it, I yay. Feel fried. But yeah, my brain has been melded. I, Rising 5 is more higher on my list because I can solve, the, the more it's solvable by me, the smarter sure, I feel. Sure, yeah, yeah, yeah. Awkward guess is at the upper end of where I feel like I can get it. All right, well, those are our top ten. Is there any games that you think we should have put? Now's your time to mention them in the comments, and we'll tell you why we didn't put them on the list. Uh, yes, I'm the police officer they plant in high school. <laughs> I'm 17. Yeah. This is sick. This is what the kids are saying, right? Is that what they say? Yes. Ow. Totes. McGoats. Sam, I thought you were going to put Deception on your list for sure. It, it doesn't. Uh, I've had a lot of experiences with the game where... Uh, the the um, the clue uh, placards that the forensic scientist has to bring up don't match well. So you're kind of just like, oh, you're, what time of day did he die? Yeah, who cares? Yeah, who, you're, and it just makes you feel like a bumbling idiot uh, trying to figure out a, a, a real crime. You know, that's what it feels like. So I, I thought about it, but no, it's it's not 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 nearly good enough. Uh, someone asked about Scotland Yard, Fury of Dracula. Fury of Dracula, I already said I thought about, yeah. Sure, I would have put the one Sam put first. Um, 
That was your number nine. Uh, Spectre Ops. Spectre Ops. I would have put that before those. Just number seven. didn't make the list. Uh, Rock'em Sock'em. <laughs> uh, Z, why no Mr. Jack? I thought about it. I'll tell you why, because anyone can play Mr. Jack. There's almost no deduction in the game. Well, there's not the, uh, you're not deducing anything. You're eliminating possibilities. You just try to do it faster. Um, there's really no deduction in that game. If anything, if it comes down to the wire, you have to take a guess. But there's no actual deduction. Um, I thought about it. It might have been my 11 or 12, actually. But Someone here said one that I didn't even consider, Zendo. That one didn't cross my mind, but... Zendo can also make you feel really dumb when you mm -hmm. can't figure the clue out. Zendo is, a, is on the knife's edge between feeling clever and feeling frustrating. We are going to do a top 10 games to make us feel dumb someday. That's going to be a lot easier for me to put that list together. I'll be like, yes, 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 yes. Probably yeah. do a top 10,000. Here, I can do it like this. <laughs> top 10 games to make me feel dumb. I just steal Z's list from this one. Let's see. Uh, rally for sure. What about... wagers yet. Oh... Uh, Mystery what at else? the Abbey? No, that's Heaven's Clue played. with dumb party rules. You don't like Mystery at the Abbey, do you? I like it okay. I wish they would have not done some of the stupid things they did. <laughs> like having to chant. <laughs> what about, like, abstract strategy games for anybody? Yeah, I, well, no, you put Onitama, I'm both not, of you. I'm not that yeah. good at them, so... No, no, no. If you're bad in an abstract strategy game, you don't feel... Like, I would never put chess on the list, because I feel right. like the number of people in the world who are better at me in chess is greater than the number of people who are worse than me at chess. I think the number of people in the world who are greater at you than at chess is greater than the number of people in the world. <laughs> what? <laughs> you shipped it's some about people seven you know, off planet? You know it's how about math? eight billion people <laughs> who are better at chess than you. That was the dumbest put down of the day. All right. It was also the longest. <laughs> All right. Ricochet robots. No, no I, that, that game makes, me, makes feel me feel super yeah, yeah, yeah. dumb. The problem with Ricochet robots is you feel smart. You're like, oh, nine. Then the guy's like, two. <laughs> and then you feel dumb again because oh. you didn't do it as fast as that person. Got it. Uh, Libertalia. Like when you play that card at the right moment. No, not really. I think it's a fun game, but it doesn't make me feel clever. No. Captain Sonar? I thought about it, but I I've only... I I've played just Depends the... Depends on the position you play. The radar guy is what I always play. It's like the only station I like. And yeah, it feels good when I'm like... You know, I do a few things and I move it around and then eventually I, I've only played ever with you, I think. I'm like, yep, Tom, he's right there. <laughs> But that Sounds does feel like, really good. Stop! Boom! Bomb! And they blow up. We're like, yeah! You know, so yeah, that feels good. <laughs> sure. Um, let's see. Yeah, some people are mentioning a bunch of bad games. Bad games don't make me feel smart. I just feel sad for the person who made the game. I, I don't feel like smarter. Oh, no. Like, that's not what we meant. That's, that's kind of horrible. Power Grid. No... No, the heavy mes mental gymnastics doesn't necessarily mean I can do math like anybody else can. It doesn't make me feel yeah, any no. cleverer, you know. Here's one I, I might have put, concept. Concept, you can do some really clever things with concept. Yeah, I could see if you are really good at it, it would make you feel clever. I'm not that good at it. I kind of go for the obvious. Seems stuff. like you could, you could almost out-clever yourself in that game, though. Yeah. Because you're thinking too high, and it's not where your guessers are. Right, yeah. You have to make sure people understand what you're getting at. Right. Oh, Battle Line. That's a good one. Battle Line, Shot and Totten. Really? Someone asked, what happened to Dice Tower Awards 18? The only reason I mentioned that, because it's a yes, sponsor yes, yes. thing. Um, the nominations will be coming out in April at some point. Alrighty. Five Tribes? <laughs> Again, wait for our top ten games to make us feel dumb. Nope. <laughs> Alrighty, folks, thanks for watching. This is our last live thing for today. Sam and Z will be back tomorrow with a back talk. We have uh, Dice Tower Cruise registration going live tomorrow, but you can, wow. if you can't wait for that, Dice Tower Retreat registration is live now. Um, Dice Tower Con registration is live now. Is there something else I should be telling people? Crew. Have a good day. Oh. Hats, hats provided by Tom's. Your local haberdashery. Support your local haberdashery. Don't be buying from the big online haberdasheries. Have after you Google what a haberdashery is. I've been, using that, a word. I've been using that word a lot. I 
Do not, not everyone that, knows what it means. That is not a common word. Anymore. It is an excellent word. It sounds good to say. I feel empowered. Until next time, I'm Tom Vassell. I'm Smart. Z Garcia. Have a good one. Sam Healy. I'm See you on the flip side. The smart side. <laughs>